Oh no. I just recorded that entire segment without audio. Now what? I guess I fake it. Okay, here I am, welcoming you to another great instructional video about the RHS Woodshop. Suddenly I look down and realize I'm sitting at a glass table wondering, am I wearing actual street clothes or my pajamas? Cover myself with a pizza box and continue. Wait a minute. Pizza box? What's in the pizza box? Oh yeah, it's our cutting board. This is the video where I'm going to tell you how to finish your cutting board now that I've done the rough sanding in the shop. There's a couple things you need to notice, like first of all, it looks pretty smooth, but there's still some things we need to deal with. There's that end grain we'll need to sand down nice and smooth, and you'll notice that from the tourniquet style clamping we did, there's some marks that we'll have to sand out. Don't worry, I'll show you how to do that. In your box, you've got some sandpaper, two sheets, there's a 100 and a 200 grit, you've got a sanding block there, and some cutting board oil. Let's uh, put this all back together and take a look at how to make this finished nice and pretty that you can give to somebody you love or keep for yourself, whatever. Okay, for now, take the oil, get that out of the way. There are two different grades of sandpaper. You've got a 120 and a 220. Sometimes they'll be different. There might be a 110 or a 150, and this might be a 250. Whatever it is, you wanna start with the lowest number and with the highest number. We've already done one round of sanding. I used a 60 grit on this at school. Now, if we look at this in the light, you would see a lot of scratches in this. You might not see it now, but you will definitely see it after you put the oil on. To sand this, take your block of wood and your sandpaper, and you'll want to rotate the block of wood a bunch of different ways. I like it diagonally, it just gives me more to hold on to. And we're going to sand the entire face across the grain. Nope. We're going to sand the entire face along the grain. Make sure you go all the way from one end to the other. To really do a good job of sanding, you're going to need to push down kind of hard on it. Also, hold the block at a little bit of an angle. Don't go straight because it's likely to tear the paper. It will also leave lines along the edge where it's sanding. When you think you're done sanding, you're not. Keep sanding. It's a good idea to rotate the sandpaper on the block so you wear the sandpaper evenly. As you sand, feel the board, and you can feel the difference between the sanded and the unsanded. Look at it in the light, and look for scratches left behind from the 60 grit sandpaper. All right, after you've sanded your life away for 20 or 30 minutes, maybe 10, it's time to do the edge and the end. Same thing. As you're doing this, make sure you hold the block of wood flat on the edge. Make sure you don't curve it around. I may have mentioned this a few times, but the end grain is going to be the hardest part. You'll spend more time on the end grain than anything else. Notice my sandpaper is starting to wear out in that area. So we'll uh, turn our block a little bit and try again. When you think you're done, you're not. Keep going. We also want to round over the corners a little bit. We don't want any hard corners. The other thing with this particular project is that when we did the tourniquet clamping, we used the, uh, the polytwine for clamping, it left little bumps right along the edge of that. So what we'll want to do is we want to sand down until those are gone. Using the 120 grit sandpaper, this time we're going at an angle to the edge. It's a little bit of a chamfer on it. I'm using, I'm using my finger to feel for that bump, and that's just about gone. 
and then we just want to curve a little bit. So starting vertical, rotating through 45 degrees to horizontal. I want to feel that edge and make sure it feels nice and smooth. We'll do that on all four edges of the top and all four edges on the bottom. Top side's done. Now the bottom side. Probably wondering why my face isn't in this video. What you need to know is that right now while I'm sanding, I'm sticking my tongue out while I do that. It's something I do while I concentrate, so I don't want you to see that. It's kind of embarrassing. In fact, I probably won't even tell you about that. All right, this last part will be kind of tricky because we don't want to tear the sandpaper when we do this. And that is these last little corners right here. So I'm not going to push quite as hard. Again, 45 degree angle to start. And then work through a curve and feel it until it's not sharp. And then the corners just kind of gently knock those down like so. Feeling for anything sharp and pokey, go ahead and go all the way around. Alright, just when you think you're done, you're not. One thing we do want to do is brush off all of the sawdust from the previous sanding because if you get any of the, that rough grit in the final grit, it'll just leave big scratches in there. Not huge, but as you can see, there's some dust that came off of there. Same thing. Second verse, just like the first, a whole lot louder, only we're using a different grid of sandpaper. This time we'll use the 220, and you'll hear the difference right away. 120, 220. Remember to sand with the grain and sand the entire length of the cutting board, end to end. Everything we did with the first sandpaper, we'll do with the sand second sandpaper. So including all these edges, corners, and all the way around. Okay, I've had about three birthdays since I started sanding this, but I think I'm done. A little quick wipe off here. Now, since we're just using a basic cutting board oil without any varnishes or anything in it, we're not really too worried about the, um, the sawdust in the wood. If we're going to use a varnish, we'd definitely want to rinse this off, use some uh, mineral spirits or something. But for this, just a simple quick wipe down to get the bulk of the sawdust out. It's going to get washed right away anyway. Yeah. Now for the moment you've been waiting for. You've got your paper towel, the clean side out, folded up like this. We're going to use this as a super duper economy paintbrush. And in here we've got our booze block cutting board oil. It's just a basic flaxseed oil. There's a lot of different things you can use. Don't use a vegetable oil because it will go rancid. Um, but you can get just a cutting board conditioner, cutting board oil. I think you can find it at most grocery stores. Um, there's enough here that will last you quite a while. All right, I love this part. We're going to start off with just about a dime size drop right there and we're just going to spread it around. Look at that. 
and just work our way around the board. That's more than a dime, but after your first drop, you get a sense of how much you need. Since this doesn't have varnishes or solids in it, we don't have to worry about going with the grain. It's just going to soak in. And what this does is protects the wood against moisture and any other intrusions. And it just makes it look pretty. Here's a good thing to use your sanding block for when you're done sanding with it. When we turn this over, any oil on this is going to transfer to whatever it's on. But if I put this down, it keeps my cutting board up off of my table or whatever I'm doing. All right. I remember the end grain is always our nemesis. That will soak in more oil than any other part of the board. I lied, I need two pieces of this. All right, we're gonna let that sit and dry for, I don't know, 20 minutes, an hour or so. You can let it sit overnight. It really doesn't matter. If you notice that it's soaking in, where you see dry spots, it's okay to touch it up a little bit. And then uh, we'll come back tomorrow and we'll dry this off and then we're done. All right, a day has gone by. This has been sitting out here. Remember we set it on a block of wood and you can see already where that's uh, transferred some oil there. So after our day has gone by, take a new clean dry paper towel, just give it a quick wipe down. And that's it, you're done. If you're going to give this to somebody, I would suggest letting it sit a day or two until uh, there's no more oil that you can feel because it will soak through wrapping paper if it's still wet. This is it. The only thing I need from you is a picture of this board and something better than an old beach towel that I found, hopefully. And uh, actually, I would take like a bunch of pictures and send me the best one you can find. Uh, I'll throw a couple examples at the end of this video. So there you go. This is the end of your at-home quarantine edition cutting board.